Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Mary, roll call. Thank you. Ms. Hafner? Here. Ms. Clayton? Here. Ms. Gagliardi? Here. Ms. Bacala? I think she's muted. Ms. Foster? Ms. Siebert? Here. Ms. Wolro? Here. Mr. Edwards? Uh, first, hey, Mary, Ms. Bacala appears to be muted. Ms. Bacala, can you hear us? I see she won't her. be going into executive session with us. She may have stepped Can away. anyone hear me? So we'll get her. We can hear you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Brick Township Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be posted on the Administration Office Bulletin Board, the official district website, and Channel Beef TV 20, and sent to the Asbury Park Press, the Brick Times, the Star Ledger, and Municipal Clerk's Office. I need a motion and a second to go into executive session. Motion. Second. Motion by Nicole, seconded by uh, Ms. Uh, I'm sorry, Melita. Um, Mr. Edwards. Oh, Mary, vote, please. Sorry, oh, I, I, gotta, I lost my visual of Mary. <laughs> I got to do the read first. Okay. Ready? Yep. Whereas the Brick Township Board of Education has been formed <clears throat> pursuant to the applicable New Jersey statutes, and whereas the board is charged with the responsibility of performing all acts and doing mm -hmm. all things consistent with the law and the rules of the State Board of Education, necessary for the lawful and proper conduct, equipment, and maintenance of the public schools and public school property of the Brick Township School District, Whereas Section 7 of the Open Public Meeting Act permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of the board in certain circumstances, and whereas the board has determined that circumstances exist for such an executive session, and whereas the board has found the action described below to be necessary and proper, now therefore be it resolved by the board on October 22, 2020, that the public shall be excluded from the discussion of an action on the executive session here and set forth. The session will be approximately 15 minutes, and the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is harassment, intimidation, and bullying reports. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter will be made public if and when it is deemed in to be in the public interest to do so, and the need for confidentiality is no longer required by the board. Now, Mary, I apologize. I jumped ahead. Mary? Mary can you hear us? Mary, your turn. <laughs> Mary, no, you can't hear us? Mr. Edwards, you want can me you do a roll call? For her? Yes, please. Sure. Uh, Ms. Siebert? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Hafner? Yes. Uh, Ms. Gagliardi? Yes. Ms. Walrab? Yes. Test, 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 test.
Natural Response. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, Mary, thank you. Okay, very good. Wasn't a curriculum. Sorry to hear that, but it was something that. More than welcome to do so. I'm fine. Different world. He changed the
Test. Is everybody back and ready? I need a uh, motion and a second to return. Motion. Motion, Jessica. Seconded by Daisy. 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 Yes. Um, Mary. Miss Hafner. Yes. Miss Clayton. Yes. Miss Gagliardi. Yes. Miss Piccala. Yes. Miss Foster. Ms. Siebert? Yes. Ms. Woolrad? Yes. Oftentimes, it may appear to members of our audience that the Board of Education takes action with very little comment and, in many cases, a unanimous vote. But before a matter is placed on the agenda at a public meeting, the administration has thoroughly reviewed the matter with the superintendent of schools. If the superintendent of schools is satisfied that the matter is ready to be presented to the Board of Education, only then is it placed on the agenda for action at a public meeting. In rare instances, matters are presented to the Board of Education for discussion at the same meeting that the final action may be taken. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Salute to the flag, but everybody stand first. <laughs> Salute to the flag, move in silence. Thank you. I apologize. Having read that, I'm not going to reread it. We'll go right on with the presentations. Our first presentation, I will ask Mrs. Hanson to introduce our presenters for the structured learning environment that we heard about about a week ago, our SLE program. Mrs. Hanson? Sure. Um, this evening, we have um, a recorded presentation from Darla Novick and Tiffany Aguayo. They are structured learning um, experience coordinators for the district. Um, the structured learning environment program is um, has just been sort of revised and um, strengthened over at the, both high schools. So um, they're going to present on some of the changes that we've made to the program. And they're going to start with what the structured learning experience is.
In awareness of October being National Disability Employment Awareness Month, we'd like to share with you our morning announcements. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. All news, during National Disability Employment Awareness Month, we recognize the immeasurable contributions that Americans with disabilities make to their workforce. Their achievements not only strengthen our economy and communities, but also exemplify the power of every American to help shape the future of our country. This month, we recommit to advancing an American workforce where everyone can fully pursue their God-given potential. This presentation has been put together by Darla Novick and myself, Tiffany Aguayo, to review the Structure Learning Experience Program and Project Discovery. I'm Darla Novick, and I'm the Structured Learning Experience Coordinator for Brick Township High School. I've been in the district for 21 years, and I have my master's in transition services. I don't want to take too much of your time discussing myself. However, I listed um, below some of my awards that I've received and involvement in the district. My name is Tiffany Aguayo. This is my 17th year in the district. I also have a master's degree in counseling, and as well have um, a couple of the awards that I've received um, listed as well for your review. Wanted to go in and just leave you with one of our quotes before we get fully into our presentation that says, the highest reward for a person's work is not what they get for it, but what they become by it, by Jay Ruskin. And we are, we are uh, informed and happy to say that our programs are changing lives, families, communities, businesses, and most importantly, minds. So the SLE program has been in existence for 10 years and throughout the years we've been fortunate enough to be highlighted in various media outlets. This is one of our favorites. Just after dawn, Newport Township High School students suit up for their work day at Harrogate Retirement Community. These are reliable employees. They know their job. They come in every day. They're grateful for it. Zachary Corduan and Giovanni Mancini are interns here. They're part of the Brick Township School District Structured Learning Experience, a program for students with special needs. It was a point so that we could get the students out into the community, get them real life experiences, um, job experience. What began with about 20 students has grown to 75, and now nearly 50 local businesses have joined. Giovanni and Zach are bused to this retirement community nearly every day of the week and work during the early morning hours. What does it feel like to come here and work? Happy. What does it make you happy? It makes you smile. Okay, ready to come to this side. Interns are typically paired with mentors like Betty Glenn. Show them the ropes. The workplace is a strong place to learn different tasks, managers, supervisors, co-workers, Giovanni lines the dining place with paper, sanitizes the menus, and covers cups of ice cream for hungry residents. The best part for him? Helping people. He's a very good, strong person here, and I think he'll do well out, out in the world. About two dozen businesses involved in the program have hired their student interns like Giovanni. Since 2010, about 25% of those students have landed paid positions. Giovanni graduated in June. Are you hoping to land a full-time job here? Yes. So far, Harrogate's hired three of their student interns. They know what their tasks are. They perform them in a timely manner. They get them done correctly. And that, that's very, very important. And that's not always possible with mainstream youth of America. But it is, though they adapt very well. A lot of these kids aren't going to college. Um, so, you know, these are jobs that they land and they stick with and it will be lifelong dedicated employees. Program coordinators work to place students in positions based on their interests. Interns must be at least 16 years old. They earn five classroom credits per semester while on the job. It's very, very important because a lot of the kids, it's not even so much the tasks that they're learning, it's the social skills and just all the daily things that you and I take for granted that 
for them if they need that extra help. What's the best part about coming here? Learning how to work and do the task and work with people. Zach, too, is graduating this year. He's part of the housekeeping team. And tells us he really wants to work here full time. Have you told anybody here that you're really interested? Not yet. I think how the retirement community might have an idea after today. People need to need to realize how valuable these students are in the workplace as well, and, and that's really our goal is to advocate for their needs. In Lakewood, I'm Lauren Wonko, Big TV News. <laughs> So what is SLE? SLE is a work readiness program run by the New Jersey DOE in alignment with the New Jersey core curriculum content standards and overseen by structured learning experience coordinators. Students work in either paid or unpaid internships and receive graduation credits for this course. Our program currently services 84 students between both high schools. Throughout the SLE course, students will have the opportunity to further develop their post-secondary transition plans through the creation of digital portfolios, assessments, and various job readiness and job task curriculums like Project Discovery. What is Project Discovery? Project Discovery is a comprehensive work readiness curriculum in which students explore, learn, learn and develop real life job skills with actual job tasks and job tools while reinforcing core academic subject matter skills. Students who learn by doing will excel and enhance their opportunities in the workforce by the use and application of this curriculum and will be work ready. So why Project Discovery? The SLE program was without a formalized job readiness curriculum for the past 10 years. We had a need for nonverbal students to be assessed through hands-on materials. We also needed to prepare students who were not ready or able to go out into the community immediately. It serves as a replacement for out of district and Ocean County Vocational School students, which results in saving district money and generating revenue. It all began with an observation of project discovery at Yale School in Cherry Hill. From that moment on, Project Discovery became a dream for Mrs. Awayo and I to have for our students. Some of the highlights of Project Discovery are the of all the functioning skills, materials and content range from adopted, beginner, intermediate, all the way up to advanced. There's data tracking so that we have knowledge and performance-based assessments pre and post. There's virtual and video options. It utilizes real life objects to simulate real world experiences and engaging hands on activities with things like the motor, electric circuit board, blood pressure cuff, et cetera. Lessons are designed with best practices, differentiated instruction, and universal design for learning in mind. And Project Discovery is a research based peer review curriculum, which is approved and validated by the US DOE. So how do we measure student progress? Benchmarks will evaluate the student's functional job task performance and compare their knowledge, skills, abilities, and interests to each job task. Evidence and data progress recorded through the job kit, which in turn becomes documentation for their IEPs. We teach job tasks that must be successfully completed on the job, which simulates real world competitive employment versus sheltered workshops as it incorporates reasons behind each job task. The kits that we have purchased are for filing, greenhouse, grocery clerk, cosmetology, skin and nail, table service, child care, auto body caregiver, carpentry, health and nutrition, food service, and mail and retail. So what's in a kit? Each of the curriculum titles in the Project Discovery product line includes a very robust complement of materials, including all of the hands-on tools that make the kits so essential for teachers and exciting for learners. Let's look at what's in a kit. Our instructor's notes provide classroom-ready instructions for educators. These include manipulative and acquired skills, 
key vocabulary and writing portfolio activities. The activities in the kits are engaging to students as they follow the step-by-step -step directions for class completion. Students become active learners when they are motivated by the dynamic and fun activity. Specifically designed special education versions include a first look PowerPoint, which introduces key vocabulary at a low reading level. Audio is included for non-readers. Knowledge and performance-based assessments are provided in each kit. The pre-post tests help document knowledge-based gains. The work performance benchmarks provide a detailed task analysis and can be used as a tool for a performance-based evaluation. This documentation demonstrates to employers the skills mm. students have attained. The adapted versions have their own specially designed pre-post tests and data sheets for progress monitoring. The kits include most of the tools, equipment, and supplies needed to perform kit activities. The materials shown are included in the caregiver kit. The kits are delivered in one or more durable tubs for easy storage and management of materials. Students use real tools of the trade to perform real job tasks. They become active learners and discover their interests, strengths, and preferences as they practice job-related skills. Examples of tools incorporated into our kit include a power drill, blood pressure cup, stethoscope, and an actual small engine. Customizable certificates of accomplishment are included to recognize each student upon completion of the kit activity. We provide digital files of all program components on a thumb drive to give instructors the flexibility to customize the curriculum and to use with different technology. For low and non-reader, real voice audio is included in many of our curriculum components. For example, in the adapted series, old PowerPoints, repost tests, and student instructions have real voice audio, narrated by a professional voice actor. Our parent involvement brochure informs parents in a positive, meaningful way to foster discussion with students about the kid activities. So here's a look at our students actually engaged in project discovery. You'll see at the top left, we have a student holding um, her certificate of completion along with her parent that's holding up her parent involvement um, brochure. And th these photos are from um, last week when the students were doing the mail handling and table service. We'd like to thank you for all of your for helping make our dreams a reality for our students. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hanson. If I don't know if this is on the website, can, can we make sure that presentation will be posted to the website as yes, well? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have a brief presentation um, on our graduates. Uh, and pathways. Thank you, Dr. Farrell. Each year, the New Jersey Department of Education requires us to report on graduation results as well as pathways to graduation. For the 2019 2020 school year, we had 314 graduates at Brick Township High School and 365 at Brick Memorial. The percentage of graduates in each school, 94.6%. Uh, Brick Township High School, 93.8 at Brick Memorial. This met the target for the state. The state average is 92.5. This particular slide shows the different types of pathways to graduation. Um, obviously, they can meet the graduation requirements by passing the um, NJ SLS language arts and math tests. Uh, they can use a substitute competency test, which I'll review in a moment. They can go through a portfolio appeal, or there can be alternate requirements as specified in their IEPs. When we talk about students who passed as a result of um, passing the New Jersey uh, Student Learning Assessment in English Language Arts, um, 230 of our students at Brick High and 272 of our students at Brick Memorial met the requirement through that path. Uh, substitute competencies in English Language Arts, 63 at Brick High, 52 at Brick Memorial, and two at each high school used the portfolio appeal process. There were seven students at Brick Township High School who utilized alternate requirements via their IEP. 
for mathematics. Uh, we had 194 meet the requirement through the New Jersey Student Learning Standard Assessment in mathematics at Brick Township High School, 232 at Brick Memorial. Um, 93 of our students used a substitute uh, competency test for mathematics at Brick High, 72 of them at Brick Memorial. We had one portfolio appeal at Brick Township High School in math and two um, in Brick Memorial in math. Seven students uh, per their alternate IEP requirement. Uh, zero of our students were denied graduation as a result of not meeting their graduation assessment requirements. Some of the alternate pathways, when we're talking about English language arts, they can meet the alternate pathway through SAT, uh, through ACUPLACER, Writer Placer, uh, Write Placer, the PSAT, the PSAT, the other form of the PSAT, there's two of them out there, and the ASVAB. Uh, for math, it's the SAT, the ACUPLACER Elementary Algebra, PSAT 10, and PSAT um, ASVAB. Uh, as you can see, we had 115 students total take the alternate uh, ELA graduation pathway and 165 took the math pathway. Not all of those students were required to use that pathway in order to meet their graduation requirement. Some students choose to do more than one uh, to ensure that they meet their graduation requirement, uh, but often pass it as a result of passing the New Jersey Student Thank you, Dr. Farrell. Ms. McNamara. Thank you. Um, I need approval of minutes. I need a motion and a second. Motion, Melita. Second, Jessica. Any board discussion? No? Mary? Ms. Hafner? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Gagliardi? Yes. Ms. Pacala? Yes. Ms. Foster? Ms. Siebert? Yes. Ms. Woolrab? Um, I'm going to abstain, but could I ask a quick question? Um, I, however, I wasn't here for the meeting, but I did watch it. Um, wouldn't in COVID times, would you be able to approve minutes based on watching it if you were not in, in I'm uh, sorry. I, I wouldn't recommend Okay, I'm just, there was a question. Yeah. So I, I am abstaining from both. So just watch. curious, uh, crazy times now. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Superintendent comments. Thank you, Ms. Walrop. Um, I, I have posted, I wanna say a few weeks ago, um, COVID-19 confirmed positive case protocol to the website. Health and safety is our top priority. We work very closely with the Ocean County Department of Health to implement a protocol when we receive confirmation of a COVID-19 positive case. In the event that this occurs, staff members and the parents of students who have direct close contact with the individual are notified directly. The communication to directly impacted staff and parents of students includes but is not limited to transitioning to remote learning, the period of time they need to be remote, and the date when they may return to in-person instruction. On a case-by-case -case basis, the Ocean County Health Department provides guidance, guidance regarding notification while being cognizant of confidentiality restrictions. Following any confirmed positive case of an individual within our school building and consistent with our plan, custodial staff following the CDC protocol cleans and sanitizes the areas the individual is in for more than 10 minutes, utilizing electrostatic cleaners and approved disinfectants. Please understand that our hope was that close contact with a positive case in one of our schools would not arise. However, our plan was formulated in preparation for this so as to minimize the impact on our school district. Teachers Convention Week fall break is quickly approaching and it will hopefully provide all of us with much needed rest, recovery, and professional development for staff. Parents and staff, please be aware that any travel comes with many precautions and restrictions. Please be cognizant of their moral, ethical, and civic responsibility, not to mention a professional expectation of staff in making decisions regarding travel. In today's COVID-19 world, travel to restricted states and countries comes with guidance for quarantining, which can impact a traveler both at their point of destination and upon their return. 
When arriving or returning home from a restricted state or country, guidance for quarantining is highly recommended. This guidance upon returning home has the potential to gr cause great hardship for the students we teach, staff, and colleagues with whom each of us works. Please take the time to examine the implications of travel to restricted states and countries so that you can make an informed decision that is in the best interest of your health and safety and the health and safety of your children, our students, staff, and community. Phase two timeline. Over the past several weeks, I've had inquiries regarding the district's intentions of providing more in-person instructional time for our students. Ultimately, the district's goal is to have more students return to in-person instruction. Having students return to five full days a week is the ultimate goal, and we'll continue to work toward that goal. I want to announce our Brick Township Public Schools Restart Plan timeline update tonight. We anticipate phase two commencing Monday, November 16th. Please understand that our timeline is not etched in stone and that it needs to be very fluid and flexible with the ever-changing climate of this COVID-19 world. I can announce that phase 2A will have our grades K to 2 and phase 2B grades 3 to 5, our K to 5 elementary population, offered four days per week in person, similar to our team 4D early dismissal schedule if they choose. In phase two, parents may select to transition their K-5 student to team 4D early dismissal or to team 3V. Team 4D students attend Monday through Thursday in person on early dismissal schedule and are virtual on Friday and team 3V students are virtual Monday through Friday. Pre-K and special education students, LLD, MD, BD, already are in a four days in person per week, our team 4D model. We anticipate middle school, grades six through eight, phase 2C. We offered a similar, similar schedule of four days per week in person starting on around the end of November. And our hope is that high school students, grades nine through 12, phase 2, 2D will also be afforded the same option by the end of November. As we stage back to four days in person per week, we'll include the same for in-person delivery of related services as well. We'll continue to monitor and adjust each level of phase two as we stage back in different student populations based upon the data and information as well as the guidance from the Department of Health and the New Jersey Department of Education. It is important to note that the sequence of our phasing in of returning students is established, but the timeline may vary and change due to a myriad of influences and information. As always, I will continue to communicate with parents, staff, and community via written and or my video messages. Please know it has always been and will always continue to be my goal to communicate with and inform parents, staff, and community the most updated information on school happenings as appropriately and frequently as necessary. I know some people uh, have been complaining that they get too much info or see me too much. <laughs> I joked I have a face for radio. Um, uh, yes, definitely my wife. But I take that as a compliment. Um, transparency is very important, not only to this administration, but to this Board of Education. Um, but I do want to remind you all again, as I did last month, I know you may be tired of hearing it, but I truly believe it makes us a stronger district and a stronger community. Um, that we have this information readily and actively available. Please also continue to follow the chain of command that I spoke about last month, not only for parents, as we posted on the website, but for staff as well. Reach out to your teachers, parents, and building principals with any questions and or concerns you may have. If you have questions that they're not sure of the answer, they will ask and get back to you. Said this last month as well, but it's a great reminder. Please stay off social media as a form of information. It's just not a reliable source. Teachers and administrators are here to answer your questions or address your concerns. I, do, I want to remind everyone that things are constantly changing, and the administration is navigating these changes as best as we can and in a timely manner, always ensuring to the best of our ability the safety of our students, staff, and community foremost. Staff has been truly amazing. Uh, I've had the privilege of visiting each school, um, speaking with faculty and staff and expressing our appreciation and gratitude from both the Board of Education 
central office administration and the community um, for them going above and beyond for our students. Um, I've shared some of the little lanyards. I, I know they are small, little gifts, uh, very little gifts. Uh, I thank our business administrator for helping us get those small lanyards out to staff. But it was appreciated by staff. Um, and the message was simply thank you. We appreciate it. We're where we are right now because of them and to keep doing what they're doing. October is National Principals Month, so please thank the principal. Uh, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other, as John F. Kennedy said, and I truly believe this. Brick Township Public Schools is proud to celebrate our amazing school leaders for their hard work, especially during these challenging times, so thank you, principals. Our principals have truly been a guiding light, and we've all worked, they worked so hard to navigate these uncharted waters. So all of us, please, if you see a principal, please uh, say thank you to our wonderful principals here in our district and assistant principals who go to extraordinary lengths to ensure students, families, and staff members are valued and supported every day. Thank you, Dr. Farrell. Thank you. We'll start with Ms. Um, committee reports. Ms. Hansen, special education. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Um, we held our Special Education Board of Ed committee meeting on October 7th. Um, in attendance were myself, Dr. Farrell, Mrs. Woolrab, Mrs. Pakala, and Mrs. Siebert. Um, we started out our um, board committee meeting with a presentation by Darla and Tiffany, um, which is what led to tonight's presentation to the public um, about our SLE program. Um, our special education department invested in curricular materials for the structured learning experience program at um, Brick Township High School and Brick Memorial High School. These materials are hands-on and were purchased to improve the experience for students in the program by providing them with real-life, authentic work experiences. Um, during COVID, students um, have been unable to leave the school grounds. Um, so this, these materials were critical to make sure that their experience continued uninterrupted. Um, progress, we discussed progress on the Warren H. Wolf Playground and the Herbertsville Playgrounds. Um, um, in they, they were due at the time, they were due to be completed that week, but they are now completed. Um, we couldn't be happier. The playgrounds will be used for socialization, gross and fine motor development um, by the therapists, as well as for physical activity. The students at Herbertsville needed a developmentally appropriate playground, and the students at Warren H. Wolf needed an updated playground um, at their buildings. The playgrounds were paid for largely through the preschool expansion grant funds. Um, some items on the board agenda that we discussed during our committee meeting um, were some transfers of special education staff due to um, student needs. And we also discussed in detail our special education parent academy. Um, the presenters are on the board agenda for approval tonight. Um, we have over 18 workshops for parents that we're offering this school year. This um, year is our best year yet with offerings in the areas of behavior, social, emotional growth, curriculum, academics, special education interventions and processes. There's a, an autism series as well as a preschool series. So um, we're very pleased with that. And that brochure can be found on the district website. All of the presentations are virtual. Um, we've had two presentations so far. The first one we had um, almost 90 um, participants and last night we had another one for preschool and we had 35 participants so we're having really good um, participation for parents so thank you very much thank you um, we'll move right on to human resources mr. Hansen thank you miss Walrub the HR committee met on October 20th at 3 o'clock virtually via Google meet in attendance was miss Hafner chair miss Gagliardi miss Bacala dr. Farrell and myself First item on the agenda was to review uh, this agenda. Uh, we had 42 action items, uh, including the pretty standard ones of, of retirements and resignations. Um, we spent a majority of the time on going over approved employment and ratify employment and, and explaining why we had some ratify employments this month due to the move in the board meeting. Uh, we also went over uh, the ratify change and start date for certified staff number eight and ratify change and start date civil service. 
Uh, just again, while we do that, audit purposes, we need to have an exact start date. Um, number 10, we spent a little time on that with Ms. Davenport for non-tenure track position. That doesn't come up all the time for us. What that really means is if we have somebody on LOA, not FMLA, not NJFLA, they don't get benefits or pay from us, they're totally off the books for us, then we can uh, uh, look for somebody to fill in an LOA position, uh, in this case at a step one, and it's a non-tenure track position. Um, went through leaves absences, spent a little bit of time on the FFCRA leaves again, um, then spent some time on number 20, 21 and 22, because we only see that once a year, course reimbursements, uh, ratified BTA advanced degree and ratified teacher rate CEUs, they're all per the contract. Again, we only see it once a year, so we spent some time discussing that again. And then at the end, um, we went over 38 and 39, so they understood uh, why the coach's stipend was changed and why the other one was increased. And then spent a little bit of time on number 42 and how we had this position vacant for a while and that we needed um, a supervising mechanic. Second thing that we discussed was the certified openings from last month. Uh, we had an Emma Havens fourth grade opening that was filled last month. We ratified the date this month. Uh, the second grade opening, a 1-1 retirement, is, is being posted actually today. Uh, Osmondville third grade, 11-1 retirement, is going to be filled on this agenda. Uh, Lake Riv, 11-1 retirement, is expected to be filled on the 11-12 agenda, hopefully. And the Vets Middle School POR, 1-1 retirement, uh, was filled last month, but we ratified the date this month. And the next thing we did was the current openings from the retirements from last month to this month. As I just discussed, Emma Havens second and Lake Rive sixth grade. We also have a district multi-century reading teacher, which we're hoping to post in the next few days. Uh, Midstream's BSI teacher is retiring 1-1. We post that today. Brick High School athletic trainer, 4-1 retirement. We post that today. And then Lanes Mill fifth grade retirement. Uh, we post that today. The next meeting is going to be on 11-10, November 10th. Tuesday at 3 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Um, curriculum and instruction, Dr. Anderson. Thank you, Mrs. Walrab. The CNI committee met on October 12th at 3.30 p.m. In attendance were Ms. Gagliardi and Ms. Clayton, Ms. Azzarello, Mrs. Goodfellow, Mr. Senko, Ms. Janik, Ms. Hansen, Dr. Farrell, and myself. Uh, we first reviewed the CNI agenda items that are up for approval. Uh, there's training and, under training and travel. There's an Orton Gillingham workshop and foundations level two workshop. We also have an adopt a classroom grant um, that is on the agenda um, for a thousand dollar grant for diverse books. Uh, we have volunteer clubs on the grant on the agenda for tonight: a Spanish Honor Society, a French club, and a student organization on P American politics and society. We also um, approved Brick High School and Brick Memorial. Uh, we'll, on the agenda is to approve Brick High School and Brick Memorial as satellite campuses for Ocean County College for our dual enrollment classes, um, to ratify the non-public school distribution of funds for non-public school health services programs and our security aid program funds. Um, we also have college placement requests on tonight's agenda to um, ratify clini clinical practicum in Osborneville and um, approve a clinical practicum for a school counselor and administrative internship. Um, we also had the presentation of the revised pre-K curriculum. Mrs. Goodfellow, Mr. Hersenko, along with our master teachers, Mrs. Janik and Mrs. Azzarello, provided an overview of the pre-K curriculum. The curriculum is aligned to our 2014 preschool teaching and learning standards, which embed social emotional skills, visual and performing arts, health, safety, and physical education, as well as English language arts, approaches to learning, mathematics, technology, science, world languages, social studies, family, and life skills. The curriculum has been adapted for our Tools of the Mind program, which utilizes make-believe play to teach self-regulation, foundational pre-reading and pre-writing skills, language, vocabulary, math, and science. The program is organized around um, several themes, family, grocery, restaurant, medical, uh, pet vet, beach and boardwalk, and teachers can track student progress, and um, there are many options for differentiation within the curriculum. We also uh, looked at the pre-K report card. Ms. Janik provided an overview of the new trimester pre-K report card. Um, she described the, uh, the revision process 
uh, she part by participating in the district assessment committee and then collaborating with staff at Warren H. Wolf to revise the report card for alignment to those pre-K standards. Um, uh, there is a, a process involving um, creating an assessment rubric to assess each of the categories using the indicators that are aligned to the elementary K-2 report card. And um, the categories include social-emotional development, visual performing arts, English language arts, vocabulary, comprehension, math, and science. Uh, during conferences in November, teacher will, teachers will have a conversation with parents about their child's adjustment to the program and their program expectations. So they will receive a blank report card and that'll enable parents to share their concerns and the teacher can explain the assessment categories uh, using that blank report card. The actual completed re report will be issued on December 18th, March 19th, and June 18th. Uh, and lastly, there, under policy tonight, there's a revision uh, to our g and policy uh, to be in compliance and alignment with the Strengthening Gifted and Talented Education Act. A complaint process was added to that policy. Our next meeting will be on November 9th at 3.30. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Walrap. Thank you. Mr. Edwards, Facilities and Finance. I wasn't I, I apologize, Ms. McNamara. I wasn't sure since she mentioned policy. I apologize. I should ask you, is there anything additional with policy and planning? Thank you, okay, Mrs. sorry, I apologize. Okay. The uh, Policy and Operations Committee met on October 14th at 2 o'clock. Uh, Mrs. Hafner, the chair, was, in, was present, Mrs. Clayton, uh, Dr. Farrell, and myself. As Dr. Anderson mentioned, we discussed the gifted and talented policy, which needed to be revised according to the Strengthening Gifted and Talented Education Act, uh, primarily uh, incorporating the complaint process. Uh, we also revised the use of facilities policy. The policy is the same as it has been. However, to make it more effective and easier to use, we broke the policy into policy and regulations. This way, when people are going to use our facilities, we provide them with the regulations mind. Finally, on the agenda under operations tonight is also the memorandum of law enforcement, which every year uh, needs to be approved and accepted. And standard process of having Chief Riccio, our school resource officers, Dr. Farrell and myself, meet to look over the uh, law enforcement memorandum. Our next meeting has not been set for policy and operation, <laughs> okay. but I will certainly uh, post one and report out at the next meeting. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. McNamara. Uh, now, Mr. Edwards, facilities and finance, whatever order do you prefer? Always saving the best for last, right? Uh, yeah. Well, mm. <laughs> <laughs> On October 6th, the facilities committee met. Uh, present were Ms. Walrad, Ms. Bacala, Ms. Foster, Dr. Farrell, Ms. McNamara, myself, Ms. Mr. Siegel from Spiesel Architects, and Mr. Bacura. Uh, first item of discussion was from the 1920 capital budget, the Brick Township High School Veterans Memorial Elementary School Auditorium HVAC project that uh, we have previously reported is in litigation. Uh, I reported to the committee that there is nothing new to report on that. Um, on we moved on to the 2021 capital project budget. Uh, Mr. Bacora reported out on the Brick Township High School roof areas 5, 6, and 28. He informed the committee that roof 5, the barrel roof, still has metal work remaining on the front facing arch and the wall panel, and that there's a wall panel proposal that's still pending. He also indicated that roof 28 has metal work remaining on the front facing rampart and wall panel and that there's a proposal for the adjacent auxiliary gym wall that is still pending. He then informed the committee that at Herbertsville Elementary School, the EDPM roof area and areas D, E, F, and G are 100% complete. He indicated that there are minor punch list items related to the internal drain piping that still need to be corrected. Uh, next, I discussed with the committee that we received the draft energy savings plan from DCO. It's being reviewed. There were still a few concerns on some of the things contained within the plan. There was a meeting scheduled uh, to address those issues, and I will report back to the committee at the next meeting in regards to the, uh, to the overall draft plan. Um, we are uh, getting closer to identifying the projects that are not going to be supported by the energy savings plan that will be supported by the capital project budget that we included in the 2021 budget. 
Uh, Mr. Bicora informed the committee that the M1 and comprehensive maintenance plan were ready and he had been he sent them to me for review, which I have reviewed, and they are on this evening's agenda for uh, board approval. The uh, M1 reflects a 0% increase, and that's in response to S2 uh, as, as, we, uh, as we move forward with S2. In the 2021 budget year, we're scheduled to lose $5.2 million in state aid. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Procor also indicated that um, the flat budget could si present significant problems to his department if COVID still is prominent in the 2021 school year. I'm sorry, the 21-22 school year. Um, change of use at Herbertsville Elementary School. I informed the committee that the required change of use forms have been submitted and reviewed by facilities and they're ready and they're on this evening's agenda. We then talked about capital project planning for 21-22. Uh, the next parking lot reconfiguration that is scheduled to be done is the Lanes Mill parking lot. Uh, so we're going to be looking to obtain RFPs from civil engineers to assist us with that project. Uh, we then also discussed the Veterans Memorial Elementary School roof over the 2004 edition. And look, we're going to ask uh, Netta and Spiesel Architects to help build proposals for the roof replacement in that area. And we schedule the next meeting for October 29th, next week. Um, next was finance committee. The finance committee was Ms. Foster, Ms. Walra, Ms. Walrad, Mr. Bacala, Mr. Sorry, Ms. Bacala, Dr. Farrell, and myself. First was the school funding litigation update. I informed the committee that there has been no new information since the last meeting in regards to either the state aid appeal or the Oprah uh, litigation. Next, we discussed the cost recovery fees, which are on this evening's agenda for approval. The, there is no recommended cost increase for the 2021 school year. They're gonna remain the same as they were the prior year. And also establish the next meeting date is October 29th. Thank you. This will be the first opportunity for public comment and will be for agenda items only. The board invites thoughts and reactions on agenda items. Each participant is asked to give his or her name prior to making a statement. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. The board will not, during the public portion of this meeting, discuss matters involving employment, appointment, termination of employment, negotiations, terms and conditions of employment, evaluation of the performance of promotion or disciplining of any specific or prospective or current employee and or student. Are there any? Yes, come on up. Walt Campbell, six, I don't want to touch anything yep. here. Right. <laughs> Walt Campbell, 655 Mark Manor Drive. This concerns uh, things under operation. Okay. The first one is number 13, M1 maintenance plan. I see the good old Laurelton School is still on there. Now, quickly, I'll come back to it at another time. Why can't we put a committee together of both town people and the board and decide what we're gonna do with that property? If you looked at the specs they had, their replacement value was $2,100,000 and that property's worth about six, $700,000. And you people were gonna give it away. That's my feeling on that one. And I told you, what was going to happen, and I guess that's probably why you pulled the auction bids in. Next, number 16, Herbertsville change of use. I see, I see you're doing that in three different schools, but there's a little caveat here at Herbertsville. It's called the Annex, and it has a great use. I'm sure you didn't get any of your fancy security things set up in your schools. You didn't have the money. That annex should become, and you better start doing something about it before you go five days a week. Turn that into a police substation. It requires no money. It just needs staffing, a local police. It does two things. It makes them quick to that area 
And at nighttime, they have a lot of problems over in that area. So it's twofold. It's a big advantage not only to the school, but to the community. It's a no-brainer. I sit back for the last few months and just get, I'm sorry if I'm a little coarse, but it's frustrating. Now, in addition, what do you do now as far as security in the schools, as far as personnel? In other words, do you have a male and female security officer in each one of the high schools and the middle schools? You got to have a male and a female because they got to go into the locker rooms, they got to go into the bathrooms. And it's a great time to put this thing together because if you looked further down, you're getting a supplement of, uh, what is it, about $65,000, $68,075 security aid? Dovetail it in. And when you get to the elementary schools, Teachers have extra duty periods. Let them walk the halls. You're not going to get as much trouble in the lower elementary schools. And you got it made. And you don't have to spend $12, $13 million on technical. You have visual at all times. So male and female, both middle schools and high school. Elementary, extra duty. That's just my old educational background. It can be done no problem. The other thing is, when you do these changes in Herbertsville, Lanesville, and Osbourneville, you don't farm them out. You're not talking a lot of work there. You use your in-house maintenance carpenter and some assistants. I can remember when I was here, the Osbourneville, the whole bottom cellar, was done by in-house maintenance. It a, was a beautiful job. And here, you're only talking flipping some rooms and changing maybe a window or door or something. You don't need an architect in there. You don't need all these high fluting things. You don't have any money. And you're not going to get any money from the state. That's a pipe dream. Okay, next. I'm just going to give you yeah. a heads up. You have a minute left with your comments, and then yeah, we'll I know. Okay, oh, I, I'll on. finish up later on. That's fine. Just want to make sure I got the, those. No problem. But I think that covered all of them. In-house renovations, all three of them. It's a, like I said, no-brainer, and it's not, a, not very expensive. Thank you, Mr. Campbell, for your comments. You're welcome. Got Would you more. Would like to, Dr. Dr. Farrell, them? direct some of the... Sure. Um, mm -hmm. I know on items 13 and 16 on the Herbertsville School and the Herbertsville Annex, I think we're utilizing the Annex right now. Please. We're using... The Annex is being utilized right now for office space? Correct. So that's, that is being utilized right now, the Annex. Excuse me. Can I tell you something? about that annex we've had people in there that have been supervisors for years and they never come out of there put them some put them out here you got plenty of room hold on one second i'm gonna the answers their agenda right i'm gonna i'm gonna ask that we allow dr farrell to answer the questions and then you we can always come back at the end and anything that you want to um comment on his comments we can do it then okay on mr the campbell i appreciate I your time Ms. McNamara, just to briefly um, talk about w the security aid money and how we utilize that in the schools. That's one of the uh, items. The security aid that's on the agenda tonight is for the non-publics. It's a pass-through. Oh, uh, that's the, the fund through. So as you know, non-public aid that comes through us gets dispersed to non-public schools. That has nothing to do with us. That is a pass-through to St. Dominic's, correct? That's correct. So that is not our money. Dr. Farrow, nothing else? Is there any other? Yes. You can. 
You're the only one with your hand up. Come on up, Mr. Farrell. Thanks for the wipe down. Vic Finelli. There's, there's, um, They're right there on the side. I said thanks oh, for did. it. He oh, did he it did. already <laughs> when he left. Yeah, um, on the operations, uh, item 15, the $549,000 grant that you got that you have to spend by December 30th. Mm -hmm. What are you spending that on? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Under HR, um, there was an item assistant personnel director was that re that was removed from the agenda it was yes okay i just want to know if we can move from wheels under 22 hr just for my information uh teacher age ceu raises what is it what is a ceu raise I, i'm not familiar with that term at all okay uh a number 30 um <coughs> We, we just talked about the, the non-public security guard. There's two items on the agenda uh, that you're voting on. One of them is under CNI number 11, and, and the other one is this one. One of them has a salary of 28,860, and then the other one has benefits of 2695. My question is: Number one, do, do the security guards get benefits? And number two. Why is one item got benefits in it and one item not have benefits in it? That's C11. I mean, C and I, number 11. And uh, my last item, which is stuck in my craw month after month, could somebody explain how this parent academy thing works? Here's my question. I see a lot of, I guess, teachers up there they're getting paid for preparing a presentation and then getting paid for doing a presentation. I also see the same names on there two or three times, and then some get paid for presentations, I mean, for preparing. Is that one-on-one -on -one presentations, or are they doing a group? My question is, why does somebody get paid for a presentation and then get paid again and again and again for preparing it? Is it the same or is it different? And uh, the rest I'll save to the end. Okay, great. Uh, Dr. Farrell? Only f only four, yeah, great, right? Well, you have time, yeah. so if you have another um, one, you... Huh? Are you done? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get four. Okay. All right, so I, I'll, I'll pass to Mr. Edwards just the COVID money. We received COVID aid um, as a pass-through, and we itemized that. Do you want to talk briefly to the, where the that money's going? The coronavirus, coronavirus, you can't say it, virus relief funds uh, need to be spent on things that we spent out of our regular budget on the restart of schools because of coronavirus. So as an example, we bought a lot of extra cleaning supplies that weren't anticipated. Uh, so we're, it's almost access like a reimbursement. We're now able to take that money that we had previously spent and charge it for the grant, which frees up the money for things that we originally had budgeted for. Okay. And now so use it for its original intention. Cleaning supplies. Uh, cleaning supplies, the technology book? supplies. Um, missing anything? I mean, we, it's really the being items. split. The money's being Cleaning split between facilities, stuff. transportation, technology, and food service. So it's really already spent? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, we, we've identified, uh, I think, everything up to about 127000 I think it was recommended to be encumbered. It's, yeah, they want, you to, they want you to show how the money was spent by December. OK. And the, the additional 127000 will be spent on things that, again, we wouldn't have had to buy if it weren't for the coronavirus. Okay. Uh, teacher aides, CEU, I believe they're continuing education units and they're contractual. Mr. Pranson, you want to add anything to that? Um, uh, you were curious. No, you nailed it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> they're continuing education units for teacher aid. Like when you go up on a guide for continuing education for a master's or doctorate, yeah. they get continuing education units, which advances their salary per contract. Yeah, it goes up $150, and I, I think the max is $450. So. For that. Um, Continued education unit. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, again, this came up again, and I know it came up in our meetings, and I'm used to it in the former district I was. So a lot of state funds get passed through to non-publics. Right. Number right. 30. So I think you see 30, the security twice. You see a pass-through in funds, 
and then you see the actual security officer that St. Dominic's will be utilizing mm -hmm. um, to use those funds. Okay. On our agenda, because the funds come through us for any non-public in Brick Township. Right. My, my point, my, my question, what keyed my question was, one of those, the security guard is getting benefits in additional 2695, the other one not getting benefits. My question is, do security guards get benefits? Uh, uh, the seven employees that we have that work for Brick Schools do not. They get paid 185 days per, 185 dollars per diem. All right, so, so I would have to look at what you're talking about. To, to this it might be. Saint Saint Dominic. Yeah. So yeah, Saint Dominic, so, we don't have any so control our, over that, ours but ours do don't get benefits. Ours do not. Okay. So. Okay. And uh, lastly, I, I, Mrs. Yeah, I'll, Mrs. I'll, Hanson, if you could just briefly explain the Parent Academy again, and maybe how, because I know how those presentations work because there's a lot of prep work that goes in by staff. So Mr. Finelli, we talked about this last year. Yeah, you'll I remember, yeah, we, we talk it. about it every year. <laughs> so, so Mr. We Finelli. We talked about it briefly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the parent, the parent Academy is a special education initiative where we are educating parents and collaborating with parents. Um, the staff members create workshops for parents that we present. The, by contract, if a teacher um, organizes or prepares a presentation, they get paid $189 to prepare the presentation, and then they get paid $49 an hour to present the presentation. Now, some of those presentations were already created last year, so they're doing the same presentation over again. So they don't need to prepare it, so they're not getting paid to prepare it if they've already prepared it, but they are getting paid to present it. Okay. So the presentations are anywhere from one to two hours. Last night the presentation was about 45 minutes, so the teachers who presented it will get paid for 45 minutes. I put out to the teachers and, I, and our child study team members and our related services providers, our BCBAs, all of our professionals, if there is something that they would like to present, they prepare something to present to myself and my supervisors, and then we go through them and we decide what parents need education in, what parents are asking for knowledge in, and then that's how we prepare the, um, the Parent Academy um, brochure. But these presentations are to a group? They're to a large group, yes. Okay. When I, uh, okay. Just a clarification. When I see somebody's name on here three times with three different dates, mm -hmm. they're doing three different... They're doing three different presentations. Okay. That is correct. Thank you, uh, Mr. Finelli. Uh, are there any other public comments? I, I, I'm sorry. And what are, do we have anyone online? No. So we're okay to we're okay to move on. I don't. He, he just said one listener, but nobody. Oh, one listener. I'm sorry. No, no one. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We got each other, right, Mr. Finelli? All right. Okay, so <laughs> we will move on. Um, Dr. Anderson, curriculum and instruction. Thank you, Ms. Walrab. The superintendent recommends that the board approve the following items, one through 11. I need a motion and a second. Motion, Daisy. Second. Second, Melita. Any board discussion or questions? Yes. Um, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to um, say that I love seeing new clubs pop up for our students. You know, I, you know I love a good club and after school activity and that some of these were volunteers um, taking these on. So I do appreciate that. And anybody who is in charge of any club, they do get a stipend, but I think I've said this many, many times, the stipend could never cover the amount of time, effort, and passion they put into that. So anybody who takes on a club or a sport. Yes. I just wanted to say that there's another one of these uh, grants for the diverse books on here, and I really hope that we get it. Uh, and it's not just for, it does say adopt a classroom, but these books are gonna go to all of Brick Township High School literacy classrooms, as I understand, or is it Memorial Township, I think. And uh, I really hope we get the grant and good luck. Thank you. Any other word, comment, or discussion? No? Mary? Ms. Hafner? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Gagliardi? Yes. Ms. Bacala? Yes. Ms. Siebert? Yes. 
Miss Walrap. Yes. Mr. Cranston, Human Resources. Hey. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm turning pages, and I'm like, she was saving the best All right, for last. I, I have to go. You know what? If my glasses aren't fogging up, I'm going through pages. I'm trying to see. You know, like, I just, I'm sorry. Put them right over there. I can't wait to move on past, Mr. Uh, <laughs> the superintendent recommends the board approve the following items 1 through 28. I need a motion and a second. Motion, Nicole. Second, Daisy. <laughs> Any board comments? No? Um, Go ahead. Did uh, you say I was just going to ask, is the Apparent Academy on here? No, right? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So, Mary. Miss Hafner? Yes. Miss Clayton? Yes. Miss Gagliardi? Yes. Miss Pacala? Yes. Miss Siebert? Yes. Miss Walrab? Um, I am abstaining from number five because I didn't get through everything but yes to everything else okay now human resources right I'm trying yes, to go down thank here. you <laughs> the superintendent recommends that the board approve the following items one through 42 I need a motion and a second motion Daisy second Victoria any board comments or discussion Seeing none, Mary. Ms. Hafner? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Gagliardi? Yes. Ms. Bacala? Yes. Ms. Siebert? Yes. Ms. Swora? Yes. Ms. McNamara, Policy and Planning. Thank you, Mrs. Walrab. The superintendent recommends the board approve the following items under policy and planning, one through two. I need a motion and a second. Motion, Melita. Second, Jessica. Any public, uh, excuse me, any board discussion? No? Mary? Ms. Hafner? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Gagliardi? Yes. Ms. Bacala? Yes. Ms. Siebert? Yes. Ms. Woolrub? Yes. This is the second opportunity for public comment. Each participant is asked to give his or her name prior to making a statement. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. Comments shall be limited to five minutes and each speaker may only speak once. The board will not, during the public portion of this meeting, discuss matters involving employment, appointment, termination of employment, negotiations, terms and conditions of employment, evaluation of the performance of, promotion or disciplining of any specific or prospective or current employee and or student. Is there anyone that would like to? Yes, Mr. Sluka. Good evening. Uh, I basically wrote my letters to you guys, so hopefully, you know, so here's the first one. I was a little disappointed to see Columbus Day has been abandoned in the school system of brick. One has to remember when you destroy our history, you are apt to repeat the mistakes of the past. Should we end honoring our veterans and remove Veterans Day from our memories? Should we end honoring our war dead? from World Wars by removing Memorial Day? Should we stop honoring veterans of Korea and Vietnam, Gulf War, who, who defended freedom around the globe? I know we took Lincoln and Washington birthdays away and called the President's Day so we could honor William Harrison, Woodrow Wilson, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump, but were they really at the same position as these past leaders? I believe we should reinstate Columbus Day, and although he may have had his faults, he did take three ships across an unknown which led to the founding of our great republic. Karl Marx once said, if it weren't for Columbus, capitalism would never exist. And knowing that the Ku Klux Klan was the greatest objective to name a holiday after him, it should give us pause in that decision and we should reinstate our day onto our school calendar. 
History is history and can't be changed, but without insight and foresight, we can learn from it. Uh, just so you know, Dr. Farrell did get back to me, and he did basically, hopefully I'm gonna paraphrase this in short, uh, that he did say it was a one-time, a one-off thing mm -hmm. that would happen this year, but wouldn't happen in the future because of COVID, we did it that way. Okay, now my second point. In another area, I believe the online schooling has been a close to a disaster. Parents who pay school taxes are now forced to stay out of work or hire tutors to teach the children. With about one third of the students in school each day, teachers are working twice as hard and accomplishing half as much with the parents, tutors, babysitters, and grandparents becoming the primary teachers at home. I know the governor feels this is the correct way to go, but he is harming the businesses, family finances, and children's development. It's time for change, and we must move beyond politics in order to do what is right for our youth of our community in the state. And I think you partially already did that. Again, that's my second letter. Uh, we just received the notice that the lower grades can go back to school following the break, but the decision by the parents have to be made quickly. I think it's even this week. Uh, can a younger brother or a younger sister come into the school at the same time? Because it's a little unfair to them to say, how come so-and-so is not going and we're not going the same time? Can they wait until that happens or do they have to make a decision now to go back immediately, basically? Uh, and if the other part of it was, if the parents change their minds after about a week and a half, can they make that change and how fast will that yeah. reaction take, okay? Uh, I also wrote, will all the students required to wear masks, even in physical education? What happens since the students have certain lung or throat conditions, including asthma? Uh, Dr. Fowler wrote back a couple times to me at different things. He basically said, I think, see the principal, because the principal might be able to make corrective act actions. And the, nurse. Uh, and the nurse, yes. Which you didn't cover, which I don't want to try to paraphrase this thing, about the heating conditions in school, especially as the weather gets, so hopefully you'll be able to address that. Uh, another one is, if 80% of the students actually go back to school, how are we going to have social distancing if there's really such a thing? Especially with now today, the CDC making, again, changing their minds on what the latest thing is. Basically saying that if, if you're next to somebody with COVID, for 15 minutes in a 24-hour period, you're apt to be on, on basically what would be considered close contact. Uh, I think that's about it. You can answer what you need to answer. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Dr. Farrell, I know sure. you um, saw your response. So a couple things. The Columbus Day, just so everybody is aware, um, this district has traditionally given students off on Columbus Day. I anticipate we will be doing that in the future. Um, it was actually my recommendation when we decided to bring students in. The Monday-Wednesday cohort was already missing Labor Day Monday and I believe the Rosh Hashanah Monday and we really didn't want to get them behind the eight ball, mm -hmm. so we decided for this crisis, we would bring the students in. But once we're out of this crisis, I know that has um, been the tradition of, of this district is to give students off on Columbus Day, actually, and use that for PD for staff. Um, as far as the parents having time, they're actually, we've already sent out a selection. It's, it wasn't a survey, it was really a selection form to parents about a week ago, anticipating that K to two may be on the 9th or the 16th and elementary and so on and so forth. So we could look at the number of students that want to transition in and logistics for transportation. Um, I, I have a bunch of your questions printed out and I'm gonna ask Ms. McNamara to follow along with me because much of the details as far as the plan and the social distancing I did get from Ms. McNamara, I consider her our guru uh, when it comes to the state restart plan. Um, we really do feel, and I need to understand a couple things. It is very important for us, and it's always been part of our plan, plan to segment in the student population, right, by grade level. We really do believe as educators that the population in need most is that K-2 to population. I'm talking as a husband of a kindergarten teacher, and I see the online learning. as a very tough population to facilitate virtual learning. Our pre-K special ed population has been in the four days early dismissal. All right, so we always had the plan and you just transition. Added, I don't mean to, and just, and added just added the added, six through twelve right, a few weeks which ago. Is important. We always envisioned transitioning in our elementary first. Does that mean a middle school student 
who student, it would be a difference of two days, but the priority is gonna be over a two week period, elementary students, then again, monitor and look at what's going on. Um, every Tuesday, I am online with the Ocean County superintendents and the local department of health, and I get updates on the uptick and things like that. So I, I say this and I say it to my cabinet every, twice a week, things are changing, ever changing. You know, what I do say today is we anticipate that on the 16th and I hopeful that it will happen that way because that's the right thing to do to get students in, in person, but I don't know, things change so fast. But we would not have a middle school with an elementary. You would have all the elementary schools now as part of the plan to bring all grades K through five at the same time. So that has changed a little bit, but we wouldn't have a middle school student with that. And we are looking initially at the middle secondary level, six through 12. So if there's a two student family members that are in middle school and high school, they would transition in at the same time right now that is in our plans for that. Um, so the parents form was, was in, as far as parents changing, we've said from the get go, at any time, parents have the option of having their children remote and can tr transition. And going from in-person to remote can be done pretty quickly. Going from remote to in-person, we ask that you contact the principal because there could be logistics like transportation or, and food service and size of cohort in that family pod. So we ask to give us a few days, but we've been transitioning in over the last month because there's been quite a number that have asked to come back in I want to say it hasn't taken more than four days. Maybe. At the very most a week. So that's been happening as well. Um, the, the last thing and part of your questions I have in an email, I did copy mm -hmm. um, Ms. Walrab and my cabinet that helped with these questions. You did ask about the heating conditions of the school. Um, we have, I'm told again, this is like a flux capacitor to me. It's above my uh, <laughs> pay grade, but I'm told the unit ventilators in the classrooms are able to be set to bring in the required fresh air and meet the CDC guidelines in that. I was more concerned early on when we came in um, that it was gonna be too hot, right? Cause we don't have air in a lot of buildings and we needed the fresh air with the windows and we would utilize inclement weather days if it was too hot or excessive heat days, um, which we were lucky uh, we didn't have to utilize. I don't believe we have a, an issue with the heating part at all because of the fresh air intake on our heating system. Um, and we went out and got fans for the, the H AC. So I don't envision that. Lastly, and I'm, this is the last part that Ms. Mack could probably add to, the New Jersey Department of Education plan, road back plan, if you read that 104 page document, and nobody knows it better, I don't wanna put the pressure on, but Ms. Mm -hmm. Mack and Mack, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of post-its in it, in and out. But remember, it's a recommendation on the social distancing. It's not a requirement, it's a recommendation and it's a best practice. But when you cannot social distance, you must wear a mask. And there are areas like now in transportation where, you know, there's not every single one social distance. It's hard to really police that at all times, though I know our teachers, and by the way, our youngest learners, I know from our, are doing the best job in really in hearing, probably better than I do in many cases. Uh, as I'm speaking with my... Um, so uh, you, you do not have to social distance. We are still trying to social distance wherever possible. Obviously, you have to wear a mask. When it comes to physical education or any time you're outside, you do not have to wear a mask. Any time a medical condition, we have many of our special needs children. We have 504 accommodations that we work through, the nurses and the principals um, for that accommodation, whether it could be a shield for breathing instead of a mask and things like that. So we've been fortunate that everybody's been working together to try to work. Um, is it a perfect setting? No, I mean, look around at us right now. At a, I keep saying I'm waiting for that first board meeting where I get to wax poetic and stand in front of five. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's almost surreal. Um, but the more we can work towards that goal of getting our young learners back in person, the better. We all agree to that. And we have to work accordingly. So I, I hope that answer. I don't know if you want to add anything. I think you got it all. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And while the masks are required for social distancing in the classroom, one of the struggles that we're having is figuring out how to bring them back full day with lunch because then the masks wouldn't be on, which is why we're not and there the yet. Delivery and mask Correct? capacity yeah. is huge. Yeah. So 
That's this the is, hardest we're actually the doing the best we can do under the guidelines space. and space we have. Yes. Any other? Um, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Mandated committees. Remember the old uh, positive revenue committee we were going to have? That I donated three full pages of suggestions? Mm -hmm. I guess we don't need the money. I don't know. You got to get going on that. We also have to get going on the facility committee. I put in 10 pages. I submitted critical problems in each one of the 10 schools. It came in with a little ESCO window dressing, but you're not addressing the main things. Which leads me to, again, remember Laurelton School. I gave you proposals, what you could do with it. I gave you the schematics. We got to do something with it. Make an ideal administrative building for three and a half mil. Open this up. You could go here for uh, put in uh, autism spectrum center here. This building here, instead of taking these classrooms, putting one or two people in an office, each one of them, it's a disgrace. Getting to the present ESCO program, we need an expanded ESCO committee. I told you time and time again, and I've told every superintendent that's come down the pike over the last six of them when we had, I lost track. And I got tired of giving them the information, giving them the information. You just had two roofs at a combined total of $3 million on two elementary schools. That could have been an ESCO project. People don't understand what ESCOs are. We need an expanded, large ESCO, not something where, oh, well, you know, maybe we behave ourselves here, we can get some money saved on the gas or the heating or the lighting. That's not the point. You have schools here that had 50 plus years of heating, wiring, electrical, outdated bathrooms. Now, someone's going to tell me, well, whoa, how come, uh, you know, we're not, our enrollment's going down. We don't need the schools. We need the schools if we switch our programs, our academic program. This pandemic just proved the point. The point that it proved the only people that were making money were all the vocational trades. We need a career technical education extensive program in this district. We have the right ethnic background for all of it. They have to have a skill. Too many of them going to college and coming back, they got nothing. Parked on this time and time. I've given page after page after page of stuff over the years, and it just goes in one ear and out the other. We got about 50, 60 percent of these kids go through the high school taking the basics. That's it. They get out there, oh well. Next. You ever getting around to the operational financial audit? I have a letter I could give to the board, or maybe I'll give it to the taxpayer, why we need it. Some of you won't like it. And I'd like to see the um, reason. You've reached your five minutes. I'm going to ask you to kindly wrap up your last comments. Just research 776 Patriot Curriculum.
We got to get going here. That's all there is to it. It's ridiculous. And don't use the pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Dr. Farrell, do you have anything? I can just talk about the uh, yep, Corps and then absolutely. Uh, and, and I know you'll, I guess, we'll cover the ESCO and committee. We'll talk to that. I can talk to the strategic planning process, which I know I spoke to Mr. Campbell, Mr. Finale, Mr. Bender, many a year invited people. We have that process. It has been put on hold because of the meetings. That's it. The, that's all we've been doing right now. There will be a kickoff. I was hoping the kickoff would have been in October. I'm hoping now, um, right when we get back after that first break, that kickoff when we start meeting in those different teams, facilities, finance, curriculum and instruction, that'll look at not only the CTE curriculum, but other areas like embedded college courses. Part of that data gathering before this kickoff of the strategic planning is the financial analysis. Not only a regression analysis, a past budget analysis, but to help us for strategic planning. So that was always part of it. We're just a little behind, to be honest with you. I've taken other districts through strategic planning, uh, Mr. Campbell. Usually the, the first kickoff is with our steering committee, which is usually pretty big. And then you go out, not only in your teams, but you have these kind of like um, grassroots meetings where you get 50, 100 people at, which we can't do now. And you kind of brainstorm topics from the data that's given to you to start the strategic planning process. So as I said last month to Mr. Finelli, um, it's still on track, the timeline has been pushed. That's all it is right now. So, and that's, that's all on me, because I'm spearheading all of that. I got a copy of that actually, I saw it. want to add anything on the ESCO? I, at this point, I'm still waiting to get hear back from the committee. We had some questions that went to an attorney and we're waiting for you to, we're waiting for them to report back to the committee so we can talk about that a little bit more um, at next month's meeting. Um, is there any other? Yes, Mr. Finelli. <laughs> I forgive you. You forgot to wipe it this time. I'm not going to help you. Okay, hold on. Let me go this way. Okay. I go noticed the last two meetings we had a security person outside for the whole meeting. What what is the purpose? What is the purpose for that? It was capacity limits, the first two back. Capacity limits. Remember we said if we had more than twelve in the public, we'd have to turn away some. Yeah. Remember I gave you a face mask because you were the first one here last? Yeah. That was your door prize? That's why we have security <laughs> here. So when we get to the count we'd have to turn people okay. away. But I noticed the last meeting he stayed the whole time. He was here the whole time. Hey, yeah. He's still here. Standing right Why? There. If it's only to keep the amount of people. I asked him to. Obviously, there's five people here. You're paying somebody to be here, then there's no reason for him to be here. You shouldn't be paying him. I asked him to be here for the, right. for the duration of the last Why don't we let Mr. Finelli make his comments and we'll talk? We're that's, already that's, into that's, a minute. That's of two it. meetings that you paid somebody. I understand if you want to limit the crowd, which is a joke, but I mean, you're paying somebody. Your district doesn't have money. Uh, second question, if my math is correct on the graduation uh, presentation, averaging out 95% graduation rate, over 300 students per clip per high school, that, my math is correct, that's about 30 people that didn't graduate. I'm just curious as to what is the main reason those 30 people didn't graduate without getting into a lot of detail because I, the presentation was very hard to read. When you put them up there with the lights on and you use dark green colors and, and all those things, you can't see those things. Yeah, I mean, you might as well not even do it. If you're going to do it, dim the lights down or don't use, I know the school colors are green and everything, but when you use green and gold, you can't see squat. So what is the main reason those 30 people didn't graduate? Uh, the next one just for my information. The NJEA uh, convention is going to be five days. Is that going to be live or is it virtual? Virtual. Excuse me? Virtual, I believe. The NJEA. So oh, nobody's yeah. going to Atlantic like City? Nope. Okay. Um, have we had any uh, virus cases in the school district? 
because I see all other schools in the paper reporting, but I don't see BRIC, so have we or have we not? And the last question, just curiosity-wise, on November 16th, you're bringing back K through five, four days. Why not five days? Is, is there a reason why you don't do five days? Okay. That's it. Dr. Farrell, would you like to? Um, sure. Ms. McNamara, do you want to just answer uh, about those students that didn't graduate in general terms? Sure. Some of the students uh, move on to a fifth year um, because of special learning needs. So they do not graduate with their four year cohort. They wind up with five year cohort. And we did have 17 students who did not graduate, but it was not due to not meeting their graduation requirements. It was for other an example of what another reason might be? Dropped out. Dropped out? Is that a big, is that a big reason? I, I, you asked me for a reason. Off the top of my head, that would be a reason. I don't know the exact reason for those 17 people, and I don't want to make a guess. Okay. Is, it, is it normal reporting? If, if, if you have somebody in a, in a special needs environment, and they need five years to complete you have to report that they didn't graduate. Yeah, until the 21. That rolling the That's all part of the reporting, correct. Okay, Dr. Farrell. Sure. Um, yes, we've had a few virus cases um, in a few schools over the last two months. I, I knock on wood, um, we really have been very fortunate, and we've talked to the department. Ms. McNamara talks on a regular basis. Um, where we might have had to quarantine a class for two weeks. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of other school districts in the area that had um, um, more frequency. I don't know if that's going to rise with the week off and people having contact outside of the school environment. Um, it does segue into your question, why not five days? So our plan I want to brag about a little bit because it's been the model plan in the county by a lot of districts and by the county soup. The reason originally for Friday and the reason why we still is, A, there is a more intense, thorough electrostatic cleaning going on on Fridays in the buildings. That's number one. To balance the Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday cohort. The other reason is please understand the faculty's issue. When they're doing online learning, both synchronous and asynchronous, and they're working what we call our brick students, our in-person, and they're working with our virtual students, our click students. The time and preparation on that, on the lesson plans, and again, I see it on a regular basis, um, is a lot more intense. The Friday days where they're doing virtual with the entire 100% population does take a lot more preparation. So those Fridays have been virtual to balance off cohorts for a lot more thorough cleaning and for the preparation time for virtual instruction. But that is the model we want to still keep. The early dismissal is more a logistical model. Remember, we still have about 24% of the population that has chosen virtual. It might be down almost depending on what's coming back. That student population virtual still has to be serviced by teachers, even when, say, 100 or the remaining 80% come in four days a week. So the early dismissal times allows for faculty to get contracted prep, lunch, and then to work with those students as well. Um, besides the logistical concern of the large gatherings for lunches, that has been a huge nightmare for large districts in the middle school and high school level. And that has been something we haven't been able to really overcome logistically as many other districts, like Tom's River and even Jackson. I, I, the, I, the, the one thing you said I don't understand, you said when you go full virtual for a whole day like Friday, it's much more difficult for the, for the teachers. So, okay, fine, then why don't you bring them in on Friday and you don't have to do that big because virtual? Because of the cleaning, mostly. Right. I mean, the okay. main reason is the cleaning. Is there, is there any option to moving cleaning to, like, Saturday and happen? I'm, no, I'm playing devil's be advocate question. because I don't have any kids in the Thank school. Thank you for your comments, Ms. I, um, let him answer the question, he, Stephanie. He can answer, answer it, but we're also going over time, so. I, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, right now our plan is not to clean on weekends. That would cost extra money, a lot more than the security guard that's been here for only an right. hourly wait. So that it all happen. adds up. But I'm sure it that all adds fact up. that the Saturday time for the cleaning is a lot more than the Friday time. So I saved you some money. 
Okay. It all adds up. Thank you, Mr. Finelli. One, one other addition, Ms. McNamara, since Mr. Finelli was having a hard time seeing your slides, would you be able to email them to him so he could review them? Yes. Thank you, uh, Ms. Are, McNamara. They are part of the New Jersey performance report on the NJPOE site. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Bender. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, uh, Micah Bender. Um, I can leave this on, right? It's cool. All right. Um, first of all, I do want to continue to thank the teachers. Uh, I know that uh, they are working tremendously hard and dealing with a lot of things that myself, as a teacher of 14 years, uh, never had to deal with. Thank thankfully, I don't do that anymore, um, and they do it. So I'm very thankful for all of our teachers. Um, this week was the school board's conference, and uh, were any of you able to get to many of the things? It was virtual. Uh, a lot of good things that were on there, a lot of good ideas, especially a lot of fundraising ideas and stuff that went on. Um, so that was very good. Um, my first thing is for uh, the week that we give the kids off for the NGAA convention. Um, it, it's new. I believe it's only the last couple of years, three years, that we've been doing that. Um, I, I have a, a group of parents, not like one group, but a number of people um, who hate it. Um, is there any way where next school year we could kind of go back to not doing that? And I know that we, if you want to close a school on um, election day, there are many uh, schools in the state that go this year are going virtual on election day. So the kids are in school Monday, virtual, in school Wednesday, and then they do have off to Thursday, Friday. but. Um, along with everything else in life right now, child care for that whole week um, mm -hmm. is, is, is awful. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So uh, that's a recommendation that a lot of people would, would like to um, have heard. Um, for going back to school four days, is it possible? Um, when, I, when I was looking at the, we only have the choices of four days or all virtual. Um, somebody asked if it was possible to, to make, still allow kids to do two days. Keep the hybrid stay on, is yeah, what you're asking? Okay. Stay on their team one or team two if they only want to go two days. Um, if that's something that we can look into. Um, Ms. Hansen. Uh, you please, I'm sorry, direct to me and then I will push it from there. Okay. So go ahead. In the new state plan passed earlier this year, the NJDOE is calling structured learning experience is now called work-based learning. Mm -hmm. It is not called structured learning experience anymore. Um, Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible instead of posting on the, in addition to just posting on the website, can we, you know, whenever there's something that goes out and we, you guys can email the whole school, every parent gets an email, text messages and phone call. Um, we don't need all that, but is it possible to just send an email to remind parents of when board meetings are and that board meetings are changed? I know someone that showed up last week for the meeting because they didn't it Check. is on it, it uh, i understand it's on the website yeah. mm -hmm. um not everyone in, not everyone has the time or the recurring whatever to go on the website and check all these details some people just know that they see the calendar was put out in the beginning in january and that's what they have to go on um so it's you know an easy click of a button to write a quick message to someone in an email um i know it's not that um Time consuming of a thing. Um, that is um, all I have. Thank you. All. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Burrell, I know you wanted to respond. Most of them. Um, mm -hmm. So, fall break, so what I was told, I wasn't here. The impetus came from the vocational schools years ago, and that calendar was shared from the county superintendent here, and apparently that's been the norm in Ocean County to take that teacher's convention week. I know where I came from up at Chorin, it was only Thursday and Friday, and we didn't use our schools as a polling place. This year, the governor, as you know, mandated whether you're a polling place, place or not, because of the COVID, that you had to close school on election day. Um, it's funny you asked about that, because it is something we discussed today, talking about staff. So I guess to direct answer your question is, yeah, I think it's something that is something we'll be talking as we look at calendar for next year. Do we want to do Thursday and Friday? Because I don't believe we're our schools. Do we want to just do Thursday and Friday? 
like I'm traditionally used. And it's something I would talk as a large district in Ocean County with the vocational school because of transportation and the county suit. They try to share a calendar. But that is what I heard was the impetus. And actually, I think we just spoke about it yesterday. We did. Right? Didn't we just yes. think about that yesterday? Came yeah, up? You're right. Look how we did. Um, so um, I saw the, the blast real quick. I feel like, and this is just me, I feel like we blast any, because I get it too in my house when I'm home. You know, uh, Miss McNamara's voice, uh, <laughs> click on for uh, Dr. Farrell's you know, video. Mm -hmm. You get the blast and you get the email. I have no problem. I, my Traditionally, as a superintendent, my last time we won, we would have a date change like that. We would post it to the website. We'd make the newspaper announcement as fast as we could. Do that. I could do a blast, but as you see, Mr. Bender, to blast out to maybe put it in the backpack but we 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 have put it on the website but we don't put we could put it in we, the student we backpack put it in the electronic back right we could do that school. maybe so that yeah. may help you um but i don't mind doing either of it but i i hear from my own wife that the blast people. is yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. they get tired of it yeah there's a way to do that i think text i'm not Yes, we can send out an email and we can send out a text message. We can also I have the backpack any date changes made yeah. as part of that way because of this, in this case, because I don't think. Um, mm -hmm. Lastly, here's the concern with individualized, if because I don't know if it's a large population. I haven't looked at the data from the parent input. It's not. But let's say you want your child to stay on a Monday, Wednesday cohort and teachers have that. Everybody's in four days. The pacing on the curriculum the you know uh, back and forth because now they're virtual with the virtual i think it could be more of a instructional pedagogy nightmare um i i don't I understand I, my wife does both of them i think it would be that as far as logistical i don't I'm not sure with transportation on certain days what i guess i'm saying at is it i don't feel the data is showing a large majority are requesting that but it's kind of the first time we've thought it through on this as far as someone saying, can I still go on a Monday, Wednesday? And that's something I think we still have time to look at. I'm looking at my curriculum and my operations. Something we could at least look at. Um, but we haven't had the requests yet. So um, remember, and how do I say this with not encouraging? In many of our older children, they choose to log in virtually on certain that has been happening. And I know there could be days where a parent says, my child today is gonna to be logged in virtual. And I know that happens kind of on a regular basis. But to say it's part of a schedule, something I think we gotta talk further through, I haven't really delved into it because it hasn't been a request. So we will look into that a little more. That's all, and we'll talk about that as a cabinet, if you can remind me, and we'll make sure either we get it to a survey or we have an answer for next board meeting if those requests start coming in. Fair enough? Anton, did you want to add something? I, I actually did. I actually wanted to just address, um, it, it is actually structured learning experience. We partner with Rutgers University for the training of our structured learning um, experience coordinators. And I'm on the Department of Ed website right now um, looking at structured learning experiences. So if that has changed, we have not been notified of that. But like I said, we partner with Rutgers for all the training. Thank, thank you, Ms. Thank Anderson. you. Um, Dr. Farrell, you're, you're on, right, with your comments? Yeah, you hit, you hit everything? OK, great. Um, any other public comments? No? Any board comments? Yes. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Can, can oh, I comment? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, um, this is Missy Parker, uh, and I just wanted to call in and um, give a quick thank you to the administration for all of their hard work and the planning uh, to responsibly roll out phase two of the restart plan. Um, I know it had to have been quite a task, and I feel like you really put the health and the safety of our kids and the staff first, so thank you for that. Um, I know my kids are really excited to be in the building four days, and our teachers are doing such a great job. Uh, they're really just the rock stars during this crazy time. But I especially wanted to recognize our special area teachers, the teachers that are teaching music, art, media, Spanish, Excel, and they're doing it all from a computer screen even when they're in the building. And they're doing an amazing job pivoting from hands-on teaching to virtual teaching. 
And I know at um, my, my girls' school at BMES, we love our special area teachers. So I just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the teachers and staff for just really stepping up and doing an amazing job. Thank you so much, Missy, and you're absolutely right. I, I love some of the interactive things our special area te teachers are coming up with, the, what they're able to do on um, the computer with the touch screens and, and turning screens into musical instruments and bringing art and color to life. It, it's been truly amazing. I, I actually want to play with it as I'm helping with my children, do, my, my son do his homework. So um, thank you so much for calling in, Missy. Any other I, you know, I have a kindergartner, and my favorite part of the day is watching her in her music class. It's just oh, the, it's the best amazing. part of her day, so it's oh. amazing. Yeah, they really, really are very, very creative, and they've done a wonderful, uh, wonderful job. So thank you for bringing that, uh, bringing that up tonight. Um, is, there any other, is there any other public comments? Okay. Board comments. Daisy. All right. Um, can you hear me with the mask on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so as always, I just want to say thank you and best wishes to our retirees. And for all of our new hires, welcome to Brick Schools. Um, I would also like to thank all of our teachers, staff, bus drivers, and administrators for all they have done and continue to do. Somehow with everything going on in the world, these precious people have kept our children engaged in learning while keeping them safe. This level of multitasking is nothing short of a display of your superpowers. A huge shout out also to our tech department. I can just assume that you haven't been home or slept since August when the plans to restart our school were approved. So I just wanted to say we see all of you and we appreciate all of you. And I just wanted to highlight some of the creative ways our PTOs, PTAs, coaches, clubs, teachers, administrators have thought up to continue having fun events and fundraisers for our students, families, and community. So far this year, I've already watched a virtual gift auction, a spectacular Halloween drive-by, a pumpkin patch, a pumpkin, a pumpkin decorating contest, clothing drives, food drives, wearing yellow for the week of respect, and participation in spirit weeks, which I find to just be completely innovative uh, during this time when there is just so much else going on. So bringing some normalcy back to our community is phenomenal, so thank you. And I just want to follow it up with just saying, Stay safe and healthy, and don't forget to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Ms. Clayton. So I also wanted to thank the teachers. I know uh, everyone has already, but I, we just, I know how um, hard you're working, and I, uh, I appreciate you, and, and it's Principals Week, so I want to also take the chance to thank the principals and, and, your, and the administration. I, I understand that the pandemic it makes all of our jobs more stressful and i i really appreciate you thank you and i really liked the presentation um miss hansen from the the structured learning environments uh, especially the project discovery all that hands-on learning it's right up my alley i love to see kids learning with um with their hands and learning uh um, through experience experientially and I would think those kind of activities would be great for all of our students. So <laughs> keep that in mind. I think those activities were wonderful. And I think that like every kid wants to play with a blood pressure cuff. <laughs> <laughs> and a motor. We have yeah, a, and a motor. motor. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's really, it looks like amazing. And, and, and I, I kind of want to play with one too. So um, thank you. And, um, and thank you for the presentation because I didn't get to see that in committee. And, and I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, Nicole. Okay, so it's going to sound repetitive because I'm echoing what everybody else is saying, but Darla and Tiffany, I was able to see in committee their SLE presentation. And being a parent of a special education <laughs> child, a young one too, I think being familiar with what the district has to offer in the future events so that you know what you're up against and what you're looking for is important. I also loved the idea when we talked about it presenting at the board meeting. Whether you could be here virtual, you watch it later, something along those lines. Like it's still something I, I really agree with highlighting our programs at that time because I think it is important because you, you know, you follow your children and what they're doing. You don't know what else is out there, so it's nice to see what else we're able to offer and how great these programs are and how much work goes into them. 
So I'm excited. The motor thing, I definitely want to see when we're allowed to be in person because I thought that was cool. Um, again, thank you, like everybody's saying. We wouldn't be here without any of us, to be honest. We know everybody has their personal obligations on top of all of the pandemics. It's a lot. We appreciate you. You know, you teachers, everybody, everybody's going outside. You know, I'm great. I've become a therapist. I am a special education teacher, and I didn't have to go to school for any. <laughs> so I am enjoying it, but know that we appreciate you and your time. Um, I'm excited about phase two, and that is coming from also a parent of two elementary kids. Um, I agree. I, I see the kindergarten. You know, it, it, they need to be in school, and I fully agree with them being in person. I've watched my son do a 180 going in, and it's so fantastic to watch as they're finally absorbing, and then Friday, I get to see what he actually absorbed. He's participating. You know, I, I still, I think that is a beneficial thing for them. We need to capture them at that young age. So I've watched it, and I've watched some of the other kids that I know have transitioned in from a virtual to a hybrid environment. And I've watched them on Fridays as I'm trying to redirect my son when he's doing things. But just watching that and them participating and you seeing that, I was like, I, I really do. I'm excited for phase two. I'm nervous, of course, everybody's nervous, but I think the district watching the news has done such a fantastic job, you know, opening in a hybrid model when so many people opened in a virtual model and looking where we are that we're actually moving into a phase two when some are backing down so much. So I think we've done great. You guys have done amazing with it. Um, and the mask, seriously, I picked my son up from school and he wears the mask all the way home. He, he wears it more than I do, like Dr. Farrell was saying. You know, it is, it, they're doing great. And the principals, uh, I know there's comments that came up about the kids transitioning in, and I've seen parents commenting and kudos, they're moving quickly. So if, if there's no other obstacles in the way, I, on, you know, I have to agree, it's been less than weeks and they're getting the kids in. So kudos to the principals and the administration, everybody working that around. Um, I have said last week, and I'm going to keep saying it again, you know, be patient, be patient with the administration. You know, as they say, the CDC changes guidelines every single day. They have to keep up with that. Be patient with the teachers, the, the paras, the special teachers that are working through technology glitches. Um, be patient with yourself. I am the worst at it because I'm not a patient person with myself because I need to be in control of the situation, but be patient. It, this is challenging and it's hard, but at the end of the day, the most important is be patient with the kids. Like they, they do not know what they're up against. This is something new. Um, it's not going to be normal for them. So how they're acting is based off of what they're seeing in the environment. So be patient with them. And be nice, be kind to everybody. You don't know what they're dealing with. We're all on that same ship. We just have different paths how we're getting there and Oh, yeah, and go vote, yeah. <laughs> oh, and the mints. Is that because of me last week? Because I had garlic? Is that why we put the mints in here? No, I didn't know who put the mints in here. got to be a by Mr. Hard, hard to smell our own breath. <laughs> I was going to say, that's all for me, right? Thank you. Can we have extra mints? Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> nice touch, whoever that was, that. Yeah, that was nice. It was Mary, the voice from above. Yeah, Thank you, Mary. Um, uh, Melita, did you have something? I'm, I'm oh, you're good. good. Um, Victoria? Yes, I would actually like to say, after listening to how detailed this meeting is from, from my room, instead of being with you, that it reminded me just how privileged I am to be a member of this board and work with you um, women and administrators. And I have served on the Curriculum and Instruction Committee for about four years now, first under Mrs. Mack and now under Dr. Anderson. And I just want to say that from my perspective, our programs and our curriculum are all research-based. I don't think they've never been stronger or more vigorous than they are today. I think the opportunities our students have are extraordinary. And I'm very proud of the way the curriculum and instruction programs have been built over the last four years. 
and I'm also a member of the Special Education Committee. And I would really like to thank uh, Ms. Hansen and her team. Anytime you can increase parent participation in any field of our child's education is huge. And our Special Ed Parent Academy, the 18 workshops, all the dedicated teachers and the parents who are asking and receiving the information they need, I just think it's a tribute to the dedication of our special education department. And I also want to thank um, Ms. Novick and Aguayo for their dedication to our SLE programs and to our students. Um, their hard work in implementing project discovery is um, uh, reaping benefits for so many across the district. And I appreciate that the funding came through for this and the partnership with Rutgers and the leadership from um, Ms. Hansen. So those things I'd like to highlight about the district, they're positive, good things. And I'm, uh, I miss you guys. <laughs> and um, thank you very much. Please don't forget to vote. Thank you, Victoria. Um, before I go into the calendar, um, Dr. Farrell, shout out to Drum Point. Oh, we forgot, just, yeah. I just sent that to Ms. McNamara. So Dale Gray, a teacher, a shout out in Drum Point. Um, record year, apparently with Oceans of Love, they um, do a fundraiser there. I'm told years and years and years, mm -hmm. and every year they beat it. And even during this coronavirus, this pandemic, they beat it again and with a coin shortage and i was told with a point with and i was told she was on the radio today gave major props to mrs carrer principal mm -hmm. and how kids are helping kids like we talked about I before love yeah. and um, just an amazing job so to one of our schools to drum point and miss bray and um, those donations for oceans of love so kudos what's you know what's really great is that you know throughout the district our teachers and administrators and parents are still staying focused on what's important to the kids and doing and even if they have to change how they do it they're figuring out a way to do it um, and it's so nice that everybody's working so hard together to try to bring as much normalcy um, as they can back to the kids I mean I'm getting calls left and right as to what why it's gonna be and for thank mm -hmm. for Halloween <laughs> and you know they're gonna be voting virtual and you know they're they're trying to get it out of me I'm not telling them um, but you know to that note too um, why it is I mean I know I talk about him every now and then and, and he's multi disabled and um, this is this is tough on on those children I can only speak to mine and he is, um, he is now, and I'm gonna get upset, and I told Kristen this, is on Friday, he, he does not like not going to school, and he's actually very mad at me because I can't get you guys to get them back for lunch because he misses his lunch cafeteria people um, and being in school full day with his uh, friends. But on Friday mornings, I, a couple of about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I went downstairs to rush to get him changed and get him on his class. And Wyatt had gotten himself out of bed and into his wheelchair, changed his clothes, opened his computer and his iPad, and was sitting and waiting and told me, the link's not up yet, can you text my teacher? <laughs> because he wanted to get on. And that wouldn't have been done without the professional development that you've given to our teachers, all of you, without the curriculum you set up, without turning a really kind of horrible situation and a, a horrible experience into the most positive one you all can do collectively as administration, as administrators, as teachers, as directors, at, you know, all of that, um, as supervisors. Because I, you know, I know why it's not the only story that in, even in the middle of all of this, he's still learned something and he's, he's developed something that he hadn't done before. And that like just gives me such hope for everything that you guys are working towards um, collectively as a team. And um, I, I, just, I, I just couldn't be prouder of, and, and I just want to say thank you so much. Why thanks you. Um, 
and I'm, I'm really excited that we're starting to move to the next phase, and I know it's scary. I'm, scary. I'm scared as a mom, but um, I think the kids, they need it. And we all, you know, let's all respect each other's decisions, whether we send them back or not, um, because it is a personal choice. And we, and as Nicole said, we don't know what somebody else is uh, experiencing or living. So I do thank you, and um, I'm glad it was said that much because it, it is that important to thank everybody for all their hard work. So to the calendar, November 2nd through the 6th, is the NJE, NJEA convention and school is closed. On November 12th is our next regular meeting. The location, location change is um, Frick Township High School. However, I'd just like to keep everybody in mind because we're doing things online still, uh, we may have to bring it back here. So just keep an eye out for that. If you can mention to the, to the other parent, that would be helpful. Um, we are planning on doing it there, but if we can't get the technology to work because we still want to do things live and so that people can call in because we have a capacity limit, um, we may have to come back here. So if I can get a motion and a second for adjournment. Motion, Daisy. Second, Melita. Second, Victoria. Oh, go ahead, Melita. <laughs> Mary. Ms. Hafner. Yes. Ms. Clayton. Yes. Ms. Gagliardi. Yes. Ms. Bacala. Yes. Ms. Siebert? Yes. Ms. Wolrab? Yes. Thank you, everyone.